everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on, let's stand on our feet and clap our hands and give God some praise. If you're glad to be alive, come on, let's tell God thank you this morning. Welcome to Brookland Baptist Church. We're so honored that you decided to worship with us on today. Please share this video with your family and your friends. Let us know where you're watching from. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Anybody know that God has been good to you? I say, has God been good to anybody? Oh, my God, I'm just glad to be alive. We're going to sing a whole song that says, I call Jesus my rock. I want you all to clap your hands like you know it's Sunday morning, and it's time to have some good church. Come on. Hallelujah. Put your hands up. Come on. Hallelujah. Call him the Rose of Sharon, others call him the Prince of Peace. I, I, I call Jesus my rock. Yeah. I said, Ezekiel said to some of as a wheel in the middle of the wheel. John talked about it in the book of the Seven Shields. Some call him the Rose of Sharon, others call him the Prince of Peace. Yeah. Depending on Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. 
Father, our rock, our lily of the valley, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to assemble together one more time in person, in the sanctuary, and all over the media streaming outlets. We thank you for your tender mercies. Lord, we call on your spirit of healing, healing of sickness and diseases, healing of the mind, healing of hurts that so beset us from moving forward from fears and doubts. Lord, we need restoration and salvation. Father, as we begin this week, of post-pandemic revival, in-person revival. Lord, we pray you revive us again. We need to be revived in holy communion and worship with you. Father, we pray a shaking and an awakening of an extraordinary move of the Holy Spirit with expectations of extraordinary results. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, revive the humble spirit of your humble ones and revive, Lord, the heart of the contrite ones. Father, we thank you for the angel of this house, our beloved senior pastor, Charles B. Jackson Sr. Oh, Father, bless him with great health. Bless his family, Lord. Oh, Father, bless, dear Heavenly Father, his vision of the next generation of believers. And bless his heart, Lord, for his move of salvation to reduce the expected population of hell. We thank you, Lord. Oh, God, now we pray that you rain down your anointing on our preacher today, Bishop Samuel L. Green. Oh, Father, touch him, Lord. Oh, Lord, let your spirit move with signs, wonders, and miracles that you do perform yet to this day. Revive us, Lord. And Father, let us have an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.
you the glory are of God. God. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach except he is sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We greet you with the word of God given in Romans chapter 10, verses 13 and 15. And we welcome you to our 11 o'clock worship of Jesus our Christ. You who are joining us via live stream, entering into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise from wherever you are. Please know how happy we are that you will want to be a part of our worship experience as we give praises to our awesome God in spirit and in truth. We are encouraged in our travels when we greet persons and learn that they join us each Sunday morning at the 11 o'clock hour. Others who perhaps are in worship at 11 Join us at uh, 7 p.m. when our worship is rebroadcast. It's revival time at Brooklyn. The songwriter says, Send a revival among thine own. Help us to turn from our sins away. Let us get nearer the Father's throne. Revive us. Again, we pray. We need revival. Our pandemic team have planned and prepared. Our intercessors have led the way in praying for this to be one of the most spirit-filled and fulfilling revivals we have known. Our expectation is for God to grant fresh all of his anointing as we tarry in revival from Tuesday through Thursday nights, beginning properly at 7 p.m. I would think that all of us need reviving. It has been three years since in-person revival at Brooklyn. And after all of what we have painfully experienced with much suffering, sorrow, and grief, we are thankful to God for the privilege to gather together for three nights of Trinity revival. I'm in the front of the line when it comes to needing reviving. Having just preached three funerals in seven days of members who have been close to my heart, I need reviving. A part of me was deposited in Mother Earth when we laid them to rest. I 
need reviving. And our revivalists will again be the Reverend Dr. Tillis Chapman, pastor of the Galilee Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, and we have come to know him as others see him, one of the premier revivalists of our day. I'm happy to report that on last week, uh, Dr. Chapman announced himself as a candidate for the president of the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, which is an eight million plus member Christian organization with over 21,000 churches around the globe. Upon speaking with him, he's excited to join us just as we are excited to receive him. We are grateful to the Lord that he would come again for his fifth consecutive year in revival preaching. The pandemic team would have me to remind you that we will observe COVID protocol, socially distancing ourselves, recommending but not requiring that we wear masks. Now, setting the preaching atmosphere for our revival today has been, have been, first of all, Bishop Jonathan Holston, the resident bishop of the South Carolina Annual Conferences of the United Methodist Church. He preached for us this morning at 8 a.m. And then, much to our delight and joy in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a brother beloved whom I've come to love so dearly, respect so highly, Bishop Samuel L. Green, Jr., presiding bishop of the 7th Episcopal District of the African American Church. Let's praise God, praise God. As demanding a schedule as he has, we thank him for making Brooklyn a stop by place on his way to heaven on this fourth Sunday in August, the year 2022. We've already been praying for him, and we are excited about how God is going to use him this morning at this 11 o'clock worship hour with the unsearchable riches of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we have heard ever since we've been in church, Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival and let it begin in me. Let it begin with me. Praise his holy name. It's offering time in worship. Years ago, we asked you to give God a hand clap of praise when offering is introduced. And the reason is because we as believers know that when we give to God during his hour of holy worship, there is an expectation of that which is pressed down. Overflowing, running over, so that we might not have room enough in order to receive. And God is not disappointing our expectation. We thank him with the handcuff of praise because of what we know God is getting ready to do for those who are faithful in the stewardship of their finances. And I want to say thank you so very much. We would not be able to do all of what we are doing to bless and benefit God's people and serve this greater community were it not for the faithfulness of your gracious and generous gifts of God's tithes and offerings. As soon as revival is over, we're going to roll up our sleeves and uh, engage three very difficult months, bringing us to some major reports that our prayer is that we will make before the year end. We've been working all year long to get us to where we are. We're pausing a minute to tarry for a Trinity revival. Coming out of the revival, we're going to roll our sleeves up. And then near the end of the year, we're going to make a report to you 
coming from our credit union that is positioning itself to be a greater blessing, reporting to you what's getting ready to happen or is in prog progress even now with the Brooklyn Foundation and the Brooklyn Lakeview Empowerment Center. And what it has meant to me as pastor is a prayer answered for which we have been petitioning God for over 10 years. For 10 to 15, 20 years, we have been praying. And so what God is getting ready to deliver to us is underscoring what God has shown us over time, that his delay is not his denial. When God says so, it shall be done. And, and sometimes the manifestation might take a while. But if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, it is so. Glory, hallelujah. And that's what's getting ready to happen. That's why we refer to this as uh, a miracle on Sunset Boulevard. And we are going to be excited to sharing that report with you before the end of the year. Let me take a moment out to also say thank you for the kind support, the gifts shared in observance of my 70th birthday, the age of scripture, three score and 10 years. Now, when you reach three score and 10 years, I promise you every year counts for real. Not to say as a teenager, because you know, you're looking forward to being 16, looking forward to being 21, <laughs> You're looking forward to being 30, looking forward to being 40, can't wait to be half a hundred. But when you get to be 70, you're looking forward to the next day. <laughs> you counting them by the days. And I want to thank you so much for thinking enough of us because you have shown love and appreciation. That's another thing as you grow older. You want to think that somebody appreciates your labor of love and your loyalty to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you've shown that in great measure, and I say thank you. And I would say as I did for the um, uh, 50th anniversary, I'll spend the rest of my life trying to show you how thankful I am to you for your kindness, your encouragement, your support, and your many prayers. Thank you from the far reaches of my heart. Let's bow heads in prayer now. And after the offertory prayer, Minister John Lakin will certainly bless us with a number, and we'll prepare to hear our preacher for today. Wait a minute, I've got, I've, got to, I've got to get some scripture in here, too. I've got to get some scripture in here. That's right. Thank you so very, very much. In fact, before I do the prayer, let this young lady come and read for us the scripture that I've given on revival. Come on, baby, and read for us that scripture, all right? Bless you. She's sitting there just as precious as she can be. I tell you, I love our youth and our teens. Let's hear this scripture. And after this scripture, I will lead us with our offertory prayer as we prepare ourselves for the word. Thank you. Good morning, Brooklyn. Today I will be reading Psalms chapter 85, verses 4 through 7, and it reads, Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger towards us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou drawn out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Shew us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I have read Psalms chapter 85, verses 4 through 7. But the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Our precious dear Malia. Malia, thank you. You're waiting on pastor to call. Were you, not, were you not waiting on pastor to call you? Thank you for your kind patience with your pastor. We bless your heart. And we also want to thank uh, uh, Lisa Gatson for that prayer invoking the presence of God, one of our intercessors. And now let's bow heads in prayer as we prepare to give. God, our Father, we bless your name now for the privilege to give the privilege to return unto you just a small portion of what you have given to us weighs beyond our wonder. We give but a portion, but we thank you, God, for giving your all 
in the spirit of your son Jesus who gave his life that we might become heirs of eternal life. And for all of what you do for us day by day, we thank you as we give to you just now out of our income. God, I pray that each giver will come to really understand not only the privilege to give and what it means, but the power that becomes ours in giving as windows are open, as the enemy is rebuked, as abundant life is realized and prosperity comes to be ours. Show yourself, dear God, to your people through the faithfulness of their stewardship. Transform for that which is material into that which is spiritual, that we might continue winning souls for Christ, transforming lives, and making a difference in this community. And God, fresh all of your anointing, do we ask upon your preacher's servant today, our brother beloved, Bishop Samuel L. Green, Jr. Grant to him, dear God, that which you know he needs to open your word of truth with clarity and conviction so that we, your people, will receive and leave this hallowed house of holy worship rejoicing in who you are as the God of our salvation. Such is our prayer offered just now in the wonderfully saving name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. And thank God Almighty. Your praise for you've done such a marvelous thing for so one so wretched. Yet my soul, you have redeemed. No one else could do it. You thought it was worth it. Mm -hmm. So you gave your only son. i
you'd see my accomplishment. Even the good ones you haven't got in me. You are so seen my finish. No, not hell.
Church say amen again. Now let the redeemed in the Lord shout hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Church say amen again. Now let the redeemed in the Lord shout hallelujah. Now, 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 you understand why everybody can't respond. Because I said redeemed. See, I, I'm talking about somebody who was down, and the Lord picked you up. Someone who knows what it is to be broken, and the Lord made you whole again. Somebody who knows what it is to be locked out, pushed down, stepped on, stepped over, but the Lord made a way for you out of nowhere. Somebody in here who knows what it is to be in darkness, but the Lord brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Now let the redeemed in the Lord shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus and all he's done for me my soul my soul my soul my soul my soul my soul cries out hallelujah tell somebody excuse me my soul cries out of this house, Dr. Charles Jackson. I thank God for him. I thank God for the spirit in Christ inside of him. I thank God for the commitment he has for the kingdom and what he means to Brooklyn and to the greater community of Columbia. I praise God for him and I thank God for our friendship and I salute him on this day. And to Lady Robin, I praise God for her and I honor her and I give God glory for her. 
to all clergy assembled in this place this morning, to the deacons and officers and members of Brooklyn, to my son, the Reverend Samuel L. Green, Jr. To the presiding elders who I, I see here, presiding elder Coleman and presiding elder Reagan Merrick, to the clergy persons I see sitting here and joining us today as well as any other lay persons from the AME communion. I greet you all in the joy of just knowing Jesus. And I declare in this room today that it's a good thing just to know the Lord. And, and my testimony is since knowing Jesus, it has sure paid off in my life. The assignment given unto me today is to preach God's word. Let us pray. Do it again. Amen. From, from the gospel recorded by St. Mark, chapter number five, verses 25 through 34 familiar text to you, listen to what it says. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you? His disciples answered. And yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what she had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Today, I want to preach to you from these words, now or never, now or never. By the time we meet this woman, she is already desperate. Does not the Bible say that she spent all she had and still she got no better? And this is the very definition of de desperation. That is to say, to want something so bad that you will give it everything and still you cannot reach it. And you must understand that when this woman left her house that morning, she did so knowing that she was about to break the law. Because the Levitical law said that because of her issue of blood, that not only was she unclean, but everything she touched was unclean. 
The law said that she could not leave the house. The law said that she could not be around her husband and her children. The law said that she was forbidden to be in public gatherings. And yet she left her house determined to break the law. Do you know that you are desperate when you don't care about the consequences or what is before you or what the consequences are for your deliverance? And there in the milky malaise of her desperation, she had made up in her mind that she was going to get close enough to Jesus to touch him. Now you remember that the Levitical law said that anything she touched would also be as unclean as she was. And yet she proposed that the only way to, for her to get better was to touch him. The only way to stop the bleeding was to touch Jesus. The only way to get her life back was to touch Jesus. And she had no doubt heard of what Jesus had done for other people. And must have thought to herself, maybe he can do something for me. She was not trying to save the world. She got up that morning trying to save herself. And can I stop here and tell you that sometimes you just have to save yourself. After you have been a superhero for everybody else, sometimes you got to be a superhero for the things you care about. And if I fought for you, then you shouldn't look at me funny when I start fighting for myself on the plane. They tell you to put your mask on first. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I came to tell somebody that it's okay for you to fight for yourself. Don't you let nobody make you feel bad about the fact that you are determined to not have to live this way for the rest of your life. And if my deliverance makes you mad, then you need to be prepared to get mad because I am determined to be better than this. I wish you would just lean over to somebody and tell them I got to be better than this. I can't live like this anymore. I don't want to feel like this anymore. And sometimes the only thing standing between you and what you want is a made up mind. I dare you today to tell the devil my life is going to be better than this. I dare you to tell the devil my family is going to be better than this. I dare you to tell the devil that my health is going to be better. I dare you to tell the devil, get your hands off my son. Get your hands off my... Oh, I dare you to get bold enough today to say I'm going to be better. Better than this. And so, and so, and so, and so, and so the Bible, the Bible says she, she pressed her way. And notice that she was willing to put herself at risk. And she was willing to put the master at risk. Because anything she touched would be unclean. And touching Jesus would make him a part of her mess. She was desperate almost to the point of being selfish. But sometimes when you are at the end of your rope, you have to reach for what you want by any means necessary. This woman was beyond the niceties of the law. She was beyond politeness. She was beyond being cute. She was beyond asking somebody for their permission. She was in a life or death situation. And she was determined not to die. And sometimes you have to tell the devil, I'm not going out like this. 
I shall not die but live. I don't know. I don't know where you are and who I'm preaching to. I don't know if you're in here or on the virtual platform, but God told me to tell you to start fighting for your life. Fight for your life. Fight for your family. Fight for your life. Fight for your life. Fight for your life. I mean, you got to be like Muhammad Ali sometimes. And you got to float like a butterfly. And you got to sting like a bee. And you got to start fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting until you get your breakthrough. There's somebody up in here. You're almost there. You're almost at your breakthrough. But you're trying to be cute. And you trying to be all timid and shy. You don't want other folk to know that you need God to do something in you. But I don't care. Who knows what I need. But I want God to do for me what I can't do for myself. I need a miracle. Anybody need a miracle up in here? Anybody need God to walk up down your pew and need God to work a miracle in your life? Anybody need God to take his GPS, stop at your house, and work a miracle on the inside of your house? If that's you, throw your head back and shout, yes! And, and I know that this woman I know, I know, I know that this woman was breaking the law. But I have to admit to you that there's something about this woman I really like. See, I like somebody who is so committed to being better that they stop caring about what other people think about their desire to be healed. She didn't care how it looked. She didn't care what other people thought. She didn't care about what other people said. She was ready to be delivered, and she wanted it now. Have you ever wanted something now? I mean, have you ever wanted something now? I know you may not have had to bleed for 12 years, but you know what it is to want something now. You can sit here and you can act all cute and shadidi. You can act like you're sitting on a log like a bump. You can sit up in here and look like you've been dipped in prune juice and, and saturated in lemon juice if you want to. But I can't sit here and act like I'm, I, I don't need God to do something. But I want you to know I don't need him to do it next week, next year. I need him to do it. Somebody in here right now is thinking, I'm tired of being ignored. I want some attention now. Somebody has been disrespected, and you want to be, uh, you want an apology right now. Somebody has been working somewhere for a long time, and you are thinking to yourself, I want a raise. I want some respect. I want my money back. I want my life back. I want my family back. I want my family to be healed. I want my marriage to be better. I want my children to be delivered. I want my body to be healed. I want my future. I want some joy. I want some love. I want some power. I want deliverance. I want liberation. I want to be lifted. I want my life changed. I want it. I want it now, 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 now. Sometimes you can't wait till next year. Sometimes you can't wait till next month. You can't wait till next week. You can't even wait till tomorrow. You can't wait the next hour. You can't wait the next minute, your next second. You need your deliverance right.
if this doesn't happen for me now, I don't know what I'm going to do. Have you ever been there? When you had run out of patience, run out of time, run out of money, run out of excuses. That's where this woman was. And the Bible says she pressed her way. She had to fight through the crowd. She had to push people out of her way. Whenever you're trying to get what you want out of your life, there will always be people in the way. But don't let people keep you from getting what you need. Tell them, get out my way. I'm sorry if I seem rude to you, but I need you to move now. I am too close to a breakthrough to be messing around with you. I'm too close to play games. I, I'm too close to miss my moment. And this woman had to think to herself, I can't let Jesus leave. I can't let it move on. I have got to reach out and grab him. I can't go back home like this. And there is somebody this morning up in Brooklyn Baptist Church uh, who came here today uh, who's already decided that, that they can't go home like they came. Uh, you need a miracle and you need it right now. Now is the time. Now, now, now faith uh, is the evidence of things not seen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you think you can act. Uh, now, uh, this is your moment. Uh, now, uh, next week might be too late. Uh, next month might be too late. Uh, I need you now. There, there, this woman had to think to herself it's now or never. Go for broke or go home. And the Bible says she thought to herself, I don't need to grab him. I don't need to touch his hand. I don't need to touch his hair. I don't even need to touch his arm. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, everything will be all right. She was just aiming for his hem. Not even the whole robe. Just the hem. She understood that whatever power there is in the loaf has also got to be in the crumb. Whatever power there is in the morning has also got to be in the day. And whatever power there is in the storm also got to be in the drop of rain. And whatever power there is in the robe has also got to be in the hymn. And with all the expectations she had, she touched the hem of his garment. The Bible says that 
she never touched him. She only touched something that was touching Jesus. And when her faith touched his power, when expectation touched glory, when desperation touched opportunity, I tell you, the Bible says that something happened. I said something happened. The Bible said that the blood dried up. The bleeding stopped. The issue was over. Deliverance came to her. And I came today to promise you that if you just reach out and touch him, something special is about to happen in your life. I dare you today to touch him with your faith. I dare you to touch him with the power of your expectation. Watch him heal you. Watch him deliver you. Watch him bring you out. But you can't sit here and act like you don't need him. You are going to have to get to the plains where you say to yourself, it's now or never. I got to have something better. I got to have more than this. Either I get my healing now or it's never going to happen. You owe it to yourself today to touch him. You owe it to yourself to let your faith reach out and grab hold to Jesus. And if you can grab all of him, then I came to tell you, just touch the hem of his garment and everything will be all right. Because one touch from Jesus will erase every problem you've ever had. Don't you let him pass you by. Sometimes you have to be bold. Sometimes you have to be aggressive. Sometimes you have to be assertive. Sometimes you have to tell the devil to get out my way. It's now or never. Can I tell you today that something good is about to happen to somebody in here. Something good is about to happen in your life. And I'm not talking about next week, but I'm talking right now. Because now is the time, and I come to tell you, you ought to shout right now. I want my healing now. I want my favor now. Because it's now or never for me. I've cried too long, been down too long, been hurt too long. It's been too long in my pain. I've been too long in my disappointment. I've been too long in my rejection. But now is the time and I'm not leaving Brooklyn Baptist until I get what God has for me. Can I tell somebody that what God has for you, it's for you. Tap yourself on the shoulder and say, me, 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 me. God got something for me and I'm I'm waiting on the Lord. Did I tell you that he will answer? Did I tell you that he's able? Did I tell you he has the power? Did I tell you that he's able to open doors? He's able to make a way. He's able. Do you know he's able? If you know, no, 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 that he.
He's able. Uh, jump to your feet. Uh, wave your hand uh, and shout, Able! Hey, hey, hey. Can I tell you today, there's something about Jesus. He can turn a situation around. There's something about Jesus. He can fix your brokenness. There's something about Jesus. He can make everything. All right. Do I have any now folks here? Do I have any now folks? Do I have any now folks? Somebody who want it now. Somebody who's desperate and you need it now. Somebody who's determined not to go home like you came. If that's you today, find the closest out and just run up to the altar. Throw your hand up and shout now. Now! 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 Oh, now! Oh, now! Oh, now! Oh, now! I need it now. I need it now. I need it now. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it now. Fix it now. I couldn't sleep last night. Fix it now. I tossed and turned all night long. Fix it now. Fix it, fix it, fix it. Fix it, fix it, fix it. Fix it now.
Bishop Samuel L. Green, Jr. Put it all in the preaching moment. He gave it all to the preaching assignment at Brooklyn for this revival. And you would have to agree with me, he has set the atmosphere for revival 2022. My, 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 Bishop. Man, you have blessed us in a mighty way. Our souls are on hallelujah fire. You may remember the fourth Sunday in July, and I'll refer to that rather frequently. I tried to preach a sermon on, it's God's time. This man of God comes before us on the eve of our Trinity revival to let us know that it's God's time. You don't know what you just did, Bishop. You don't know what you just did, Bishop. He came to let us know that it's God's time. Go back and read, listen to that sermon again. Go back and listen to that sermon again. It's God's time now. I want to invite you to Jesus, but before I do, I, I, I want to put an exclamation point on it's God's time now. Whew. In Esther chapter 4, verse 14, Mordecai said to Esther, for who knoweth whether or not you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I told you God is performing miracles before our very eyes. I want Mayor Tim Miles to stand up just a moment if you don't mind. God has brought him to the seat of mayor of the city of West Columbia for such a time as this. I mean that from my heart. Councilman Mickey Pringle, will you please stand? This brother is one of, if not the most considerate, compassionate, selfless public servant I have known in 51 years of pastor in the Brooklyn Church. He has no ulterior motives. He does not have a hidden agenda. He's not trying to use the office where he serves as a stepping stone to go somewhere else. He just wants God to use him in the glory of his work for such a time as this. I don't know, Bishop, of a truer servant leader and community pastor as I know in Pastor Kenneth Taylor of the Turner Memorial AME Church right here in Stand Up, Pastor Taylor. And the reason, after all of these years, God is turning things around in District 5 of the city of West Columbia is because people who have become willing vessels to use, be used by God, not for vain selfish glory, but for His, and I'm going to preach on that next Sunday, for His glory. I thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for being here. Mother Roseanne, we bless your name. And now, we want to invite you to Jesus Christ. Minister John, Roosevelt, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, as I invite you to Jesus Christ today. These three gentlemen are here for such a time as this. Let's stand.
us today. It's God's time for you now. Bishop Samuel L. Green Jr. has poured his heart out with much clarity and conviction, appealing to you through the preached word to prepare yourself. Come into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and do it now. The only time we are guaranteed of is this moment, now. You don't know if you're going to make it back home safely following the benediction. Only time you got is put ye not off today for tomorrow because all you've got is now. Will you come today? Will you, will you come today? If you care not to walk down the aisle, following the benediction, I'll place my mask on and I'm going to stand before you with my arms outstretched to receive you. Somebody is coming. God bless you, Bishop. There's a mighty move of God among us. We just baptized and fellowshiped in the church just two Sundays ago. 
over 50 persons. And just two Sundays, no, that was third, what Sunday? That was the third Sunday, right? That was last Sunday, was that last Sunday? That about last Sunday. We have almost 30 now to join just, just since, including that Sunday, there's a mighty move of God. Now is the hour of opportunity for you. Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for the rich blessing that has come to us this Lord's Day of Worship. Through this, your favored anointed manservant, Bishop Samuel L. Green, Jr. So much went forth, God, in preparation and proclamation of your word during this preaching moment. We ask you to restore it to him, dear God. Restore the virtue in greater measure is what we ask of you in the name of Jesus, our Christ. I pray good health, God, as he travels to and fro in this seventh Episcopal district and beyond. The oversight he has of so many in his district, keep him in good health, God. Impart greater wisdom unto him, God, in terms of the management of his time and meeting demands and honoring schedules and commitments, God, that he might live longer to preach as he has done unto our hearings this day. Such is our prayer for this great manservant. And your people, dear God, may they know, God, that the next moment, not just tomorrow, the next moment is not promised. And if there's anybody right now, God, who's yet struggling in conflict right now, so let that conflict give way to your inner spirit that's within, speaking to them not to put off any longer, but come now. That's what we're asking as we bless your name for those who've already come. In the name of Jesus, our Christ. And whatever it is, God, your people may be asking of you. I stand in agreement with them according to what your will is for their lives. And Mayor Tim Miles, and Councilman Mickey Pringle, and others who serve as public servants in West Columbia, I pray, dear God, a continual compassionate spirit as they provide service to meet the needs, not just for some of us, but for all of us, even those whom you refer to as the least of these. That's our prayer. It's from my heart as I stand in agreement with your people just now. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and prosperity now and always. Christ. 